All right, so let's see how we can use these double angle formulas that we just recently derived. Uh, so what we do now, right now, is we know that sine of x is root 2 over 3. And for some reason, we want to know um, the value of cosine of 2x, sine of 2x, and tangent of 2x. So this would be like knowing sine of 30, but we want sine of 60. Um, so we don't just find sine of 30 and double it. We have to use formulas. So let's see. We know that it's in the second quadrant from pi over 2 to pi. That'll be useful to tell us the sine of cosine. So it's somewhere over here. So in this quadrant, sine x is positive, which makes sense. Cosine x will be negative. So let's find cosine of x. Um, we know that um, cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug in sine. Um, we're not doing the 2x yet. So we get 1 minus square root 2 over 3. So we get 1 minus 2 over 9. Square root 2 becomes 2. 3 squared becomes 9. And this becomes 7 over 9. So cosine of squared x is 7 over 9. And then... When we take the square root, we have to check, is it going to be the positive or negative root? And so in this case, it's going to be the negative root because we're in the second quadrant. So that's why that was important to figure out. So cosine of x will be the negative square root of 7 ninths or negative square root 7 over 3. So if we were to draw this triangle, it would be negative root 7 over 3 on the bottom and root 2 over 3 for the vertical, for the y. All right, but what we're interested in is 2x. So 2x is basically doubling this angle. So if we have like uh, 120 degrees, then double would be 240, which is somewhere down here, All right, and so on. Um, so we're not going to draw the angle. We're just going to use formulas. So we'll probably the double angle two x will be here or here. Just kind of depends on how big x is. So we can find cosine of two x by using a formula. Um, it's not two times cosine of x. It doesn't just double. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and use the first formula. So cosine of squ squared minus sine squared of x. So we're using stuff we know about x, angle x, to find out about angle two x. So whenever we have different angles, we have to use formulas. So cosine squared will be negative root 7 over 3 squared, and then minus root 2 over 3 squared, which gives me 7 over 9 minus 2 over 9, which is 5 over 9. So cosine of 2x is 5 ninths. So I don't really know what 2x is. I just know that the cosine of it is 5 ninths. Um, and this just happens in calculus sometimes. So we're just practicing skills. Sine of 2x. We'll use this formula. 2 sine x cosine x. So just 2 times sine, which was root 2 over 3. And then cosine was negative root 7 over 3. And we get... Um, 2 over 9, and then we can combine square roots to get square root 14, and it's negative. So sine of 2x is negative 2 square root 14 over 9. And then tangent, we could use this crazy formula, or we could just do sine over cosine. So tangent of 2x will be sine of 2x over cosine of 2x. So oftentimes you have more than one choice of formulas. So, so the hardest part is just picking which one to use. So sometimes we'll make the wrong choice. It happens. Um, if it gets messy, pick a different one. So sine is negative 2 root 14 over 9, and cosine was 5 ninths. And then the way this works, the nines cancel out. So we just get negative 2 root 14 over 5. And that's tangent of 2x.
And the symbols are different, right? So cosine is now positive because we're in a different quadrant. Sine is now negative because we're in a different quadrant. So here's my angle x. And so angle 2x, it looks like it ended up being here because sine is negative and cosine is positive. So that's just about double whatever that angle was. So maybe this angle was more like that. Cool, I know it's tricky. Formulas are overwhelming. Make a nice summary sheet, have them to reference. Um, maybe organize them by when they're useful. Um, let's try one more formula and then we'll be done with this section. So if we solve, if we take those double angles and solve for the single angle, um, I'll do it for this one and then you can just blame me on the other one. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add one. So one plus cosine of two X is equal to two cosine squared of X and then divide by two. And we've solved for cosine squared. Um, the only thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the letters. So let X equal X over two. And so then two X would be X. And so you'll see that in the formula below, and that's why, so we can call it a half angle formula. So cosine squared of x over two is equal to one half plus one um, plus cosine x. So I just changed, I just cut them in half. Um, and so these are useful when we have half angles rather than double angles. Um, so an example here is cosine of pi over eight, and that's useful because we don't know pi over eight, but we do know pi over four. And so I know that I'm looking for the half angle, but I know the bigger angle. So that's when I would use these formulas. So this tells me that cosine of pi over eight, um, let's do cosine squared and then we can take the square root. According to this formula would be one half, one plus cosine of pi over four, right? Because pi over eight is pi over four over two. So the half angle is nice when you have a half angle that you're trying to find out, but you know the bigger angle. All right, and so what is cosine of pi over four? Um, pi over four, that's that nice angle where they're the same, it's the medium side. So root two over two and root two over two. Cosine is horizontal, but they're both the same here, so you'd get it right even if you messed up. So we'll get one half, one plus root two over two is cosine squared, and then we'll just take the square root. And then do we want the positive root or the negative root? So because pi over eight is in this quadrant, we want the positive root. All right, cosine is still positive. So cosine of pi over eight is the square root of one half, one plus root two over two. And I'm probably just going to leave it like this. I don't think there's really a nice way to write this one. And that would be considered the exact answer. Um, we like exact answers in calculus. So we're going to practice just getting used to these really ugly numbers, as ugly as they are, um, and not be too afraid of it. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I think that's it for this section. Um, just organize the identities nicely so it can, you can help make good decisions on when to use which one. Um, it's nice to write like notes like here, like when do I use this one, when I have a half angle that I don't know, right, things like that. You don't know, when I say you don't know, I mean I don't know on unit circle. All right, well, I hope this helped. Let me know if you have questions.